Okay, I want to keep this video as short and as to the point as possible because nobody likes to watch a 30 minute video just to figure out how they can get rid of algae. So let's get straight into it. First of all, why do we get black wash algae? There could actually be a lot of different reasons for that. That's why this one is so difficult to figure out. But it's usually there are like three main reasons that, that are causing it. First one is issues with CO2. Second one is too much waste organics. And the third one is unhealthy plants. So when it comes to the first one, issues with CO2, it's usually either your CO2 levels are fluctuating or you're simply not injecting enough CO2. Of course, it could also be that you're not using CO2 at all, and that's why you have BBA. But in that case, it's usually a combination of multiple things as well. So you're not injecting CO2, you have high waste organics, and maybe you're using too much light as well. But the first two, like fluctuating CO2 levels and not enough CO2 are really bad, are two really bad triggers for BBA. And then the second one, too much waste organics. What I mean by that is simply that your aquarium is dirty, you need to clean it more often. So either you need to do more water changes, or you need to clean your substrate better, maybe you need to clean your filter, maybe all three of them. And then the third one, unhealthy plants, kind of speaks for itself, but plants in general produce waste organics as well. It's so just a tiny amount, but when plants are stressed or when they're not healthy, that amount of waste organics production is increased and algae feeds off those waste organics. So you want to keep your plants healthy because healthy plants actually produce an enzyme that keeps algae away. So yeah, just try focusing on growing healthy plants. So those were like the three most common reasons for BBA to appear, but there's actually a few more. So for example, you can also get BBA when you're overdosing liquid fertilizer, uh, when you have too much light, when you have a very strong flow, and you can also get BBA in a new setup. So the first one, overdosing liquid fertilizer, this one probably some people will disagree with me, but here I'm really speaking just from my own experience. And in the past few years, I've significantly reduced the amount of liquid fertilizer that I dose in all my tanks. And with that, I've also seen a huge decrease in the amount of algae that I get, including BBA. Then the second one, too much light. This one is a bit tricky because it's never just pure that too much light will cause BBA. It's more so that too much light will cause an imbalance. So if you have a lot of light, you also need CO2 and you also need more fertilizer. And if those two are lacking, then you will get BBA. Then the strong flow. So quite often you'll see BBA either on your filter outflow or in the path of your filter outflow. And I'm still not exactly sure about this, but my thought process is that high flow and fast flowing water contains more oxygen, right? It's, it's highly oxygenated water. And because of that, it also contains less CO2 basically. So I think because the CO2 levels in fast flowing water are lower, I think that's why you get some BBA, but not exactly sure, it's just my, my thought process. And the last one, you can get BBA in the new setup. That's purely because in a new setup, you don't really have a lot of beneficial bacteria just yet. And you need these bacteria to break down organic waste and to break down ammonia. So if you don't really have a lot of beneficial bacteria, then it's quite normal to get some BBA. It should only just be a small amount. If you get a lot of BBA, then of course something else is wrong. But if you have just started a new tank and you're only seeing a little bit of BBA, it's probably just because your aquarium is just not really balanced yet. So don't panic straight away. Just follow everything that I'm saying in this video and it should be okay. Okay, so those were like the seven reasons that in my opinion can cause black brush algae. Now it's time for a little rant because while I was preparing for this video, I was doing a little bit of research, kind of seeing what other advice is out there. And there were a few things that had me quite confused and a little bit alarming as well. So there were a couple of websites saying that you can get black brush algae from outside sources. So they were saying that you can get BBA when you buy new fish. So they were suggesting that when you buy new fish, you quarantine them first, just to make sure that the fish isn't carrying the BBA or the tank water from the shop isn't carrying the BBA. I don't know, sounds a little bit far-fetched to me. They were also saying that you can get BBA from cross-contamination between tanks. So for example, if I was just maintaining that tank over there, the tank has a little bit of BBA in there, and then I want to start working on this tank. So I would first have to clean and disinfect all my tools before I start working on this tank. Otherwise, that, that tank might get BBA as well. I know I'm not an algae expert, but it just kind of seems the wrong way to, to go about things. If I was a beginner and I would be reading that information, thinking to get into the hobby, I would be completely put off. I wouldn't even get started. So I believe that blackwash algae only grows when the conditions are favorable. So I would put all my energy into making sure that the conditions in the tank are good, trying to grow healthy plants, making sure the CO2 levels are stable, making sure the tank is clean. So I would do that instead of worrying about cross-contamination and quarantining and all those kind of things, you know? Yeah, that's the end of my rant. Wait, no, I actually have one more thing. Something else I kept popping up is that you can raise the CO2 levels in your tank by using this stuff, liquid carbon. And that's a nice sales pitch from anyone who's trying to sell you liquid carbon, but this stuff has nothing to do with actual CO2. And adding this to your tank is not gonna help you grow plants faster or better or more colorful. The only thing this stuff is good for is helping you kill your algae. 
So I do recommend using it, but only to kill algae and not for better plant growth. I'll leave a link on top of the screen from fellow YouTuber Logan Rando. He actually did a really deep dive into Seekim XL, which is exactly the same stuff as this. And he really goes into like what it is, what it does and what it's good for. So I'll leave a link on top of the screen. Definitely check it out. Now there's a lot of good information out there as well. Uh, one website that I particularly liked was the 2HourAcarist.com. They had a very interesting article about BBA where they actually mentioned that as a general rule, when you have BBA on your hardscape, then it has to do with the excess waste organics in your aquarium. And if you have a lot of BBA on your plants, then it has to do with either your CO2 or the fact that your plants are just not healthy. That was something completely new to me, but kind of makes sense as well. So that's it. I don't want to make this video any longer by talking about how you can get rid of black bush algae because there's already tons of information about that online. Just know that I use the, uh, the liquid carbon and I'll just dose it directly in the water column. Or if it's really bad, I will lower the water level and paint the liquid carbon on the algae itself. Yeah, that's it guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time.